My friend deserved to have his girlfriend cheat on him and then get his ass beat by her affair partner. I told him that. Am I the a-hole? This is a lot to take in here. Big sentence. A big sentence as well in terms of sentencing someone to dastardly outcomes. Just like you deserve it. Yeah. I sentence you to being beaten and cheated on. Yeah. They would be the a-hole if it happened like directly. Like they watched the fight happen mm. and they didn't do anything. They're like, hey, you deserve that. Well, let's see if OP is right. This is OK OP, the home of the craziest stories on earth. I'm Sam and Riley. Let's get into this story. Honest version 8785 says, my friend Mark, male 18, has recently been having a lot of relationship troubles with his girlfriend, Leia, female 18. They got together back in February of this year when we were still in high school and their relationship has become a complete train wreck. Mark was and still is head over heels for Leia. He has told me and my other friends that she's definitely the one and that he eventually plans on marrying and settling down. Typical high schooler relationship. I mean, at 18, I feel like your first relationship, I thought my first relationship was going to be the one. Dude, same. Put everything I Ouch. could into it. Ouch. Yeah, and now we're broken people. Now we're broken people, but we're healing. But we're healing. It's a new year. It's a healing process. New year, new me. Yep. New beautiful Is this your year, bees. Sam? This is my year. Every year has been my year. Dude, this, I love that. Is this your year? Honestly, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I'm just really, really, 2025 is going to definitely be my year because I'm setting myself up for success in 2024 and in 2025. You know how many great movies are coming out in 2025? What? A lot. Like which one? Like Batman 2. <gasps> Wait, with, uh... Yep, my boy. With Edward Cullen? Team Edward. He's Team, Team Edward. Edward. This all seemed both premature and immature to me, but it's beside the point. Leia, on the other hand, is a nightmare. Nice. She's cheated on Mark several times now, and every time she does, she gives Mark some lame story about him not being supportive enough, or that she made a mistake, or that she wanted to see him get jealous for her sake. Oh, that is a terrible list of excuses. Yeah, and I'm, I guess Mark likes this because it's like... Keeps it interesting. Keeps it, yeah. Mark's addicted to the chaos, dude. Yes, he loves it crazy. He loves it crazy. Just like Batman's addicted to Joker, dude. Whoa. Whoa, that's deep. Yeah, dude. He's addicted to the chaos yeah, because be you can't other. solve chaos without there being chaos to solve. I always be chasing each other on golf. Yeah, I know. It's kind of cute. It's a little romance story. He gobbles it up every time. <laughs> According to Mark, Leia largely acts like this because her father was very abusive towards her and her mother, and therefore she carries a lot of trauma with her. Aww. Mark constantly reiterated that he wants to help her work past that, but things haven't really been going that way. I mean, it's it's hard to help someone work through like daddy yeah. issues. Like th th that runs deep. Especially that when you deep. don't have a lot of experience with life. Yeah, 18. especially when you're 18, <laughs> doing the job of like a full-blown therapist that would take years to happen. Like, yeah, let me, I can solve this. Yeah, I, can I got this. this. I got this. Yeah. It's like looking at like a fucking jet engine and being like, I've driven a car. I can fix a jet I'm engine. Pretty sure I can do this. Yeah, I got it. Easy. Dude, I have an okay story time. What? No, no, tell, tell me at the end. Tell me at the end. Okay, so since September, Leia has been seeing this other guy, Derek, male 22, and she's 100% infatuated with him. Wait, is she dating both of them? Well, she's getting around town, so probably. I only know this based on what my other friends and Mark have been telling me because I was in another state for college. Mark has been arguing a lot with Leia about Derek, and she has threatened to leave Mark if he doesn't simply accept her for who she is. What, like a piece of shit? <laughs> He's just a friend. Well, I, no, dude, I think she's fully saying I am also hooking up with Mark. Oh, wow. I think she, and she's like, this is who I am. I love that she's a honest person. Maybe she's like being like, I only want to be in a poly relationship now. Mm, that's a big word for an 18 year old. Poly? It's only two syllables. <laughs> but like, I didn't know what that was at 18. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, all the Gen Z kids, though, are like, I'm in like a poly, amorphous, whatever relationship. Like all the Gen Z, Gen Z school is crazy now. Yeah. Uh. Do you, all right, it's in the comments, is anyone in, who is in like high school or whatever, or re, or in recent college, mm, like, did they yeah. have like poly relationships in their high school? Because oh, yeah. I think we read another story about someone having a poly relationship. In high school? In high school. It happens. He did. As in. He accepted her for who she is. Not only that, he and Leia have entered what he calls a semi-open relationship. This means, according to Mark, that Leia is allowed to see Derek as much as he wants, but Mark isn't allowed to see anyone else. Man, Mark is getting Nah, dog, that's screwed. called manipulation. <laughs> This is because Leia feared Mark would become emotionally invested in them and leave her. Mark begrudgingly agreed to this and has been seething for months about it. 
Bro, it just it it's not the relationship for you, man. It just yeah. you gotta leave. You gotta leave, man. It's so bad. That is bad. You would would you I, we, first girlfriend? Would you have stayed? Nah. Yeah, I I, I would so. have stayed. I mean, if it was a very emotionally entwined relationship, I probably would have a hard time leaving. Yeah, but. And that's what it seems like with Mark. Yeah, of course. He's fully he's fully in. He's, this is the girl he's going to marry. Yeah. It's going to be him and her. And then I guess Derek. Derek's going to be the best man. <laughs> or the man. And he's or the, the best man. man. Oh, yeah, he's the best man. Oh. Since about November, Leia has been seeing Derek more than she does Mark. While Mark doesn't admit to it, our other friends have told me that she is essentially in a full-time relationship with Derek and only comes to Mark for money and emotional support. Oh! Oh! And emotional... Okay. Does Derek know about Mark? This is horrible. Wait, sorry. Uh, money and emotional support? So anytime she's hurt by Derek, she goes to yeah. Mark and is like... Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I don't... That's my question. I too. wonder if Derek knows. Because if like the reason... Like the story story title states... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Derek doesn't know yet. I don't... Yeah. Put in the comments if you think Derek knows or doesn't know. Don't cheat. Don't look forward. Don't Put it in right now. right now. Do you think Derek Pause knows? Video. I think Derek doesn't know. So... Fast forward to this week, and I'm back home for the break. Mark started texting me on Saturday saying that he hated Derek for trying to steal his girl and wanted to beat his ass that night. Yeah, I got this. Come to the flagpole after school and let's duke it out. Or it's like the client, you remember that episode of The Office where Dwight and Andy are doing a gentleman's duel over Angela? The winner of the duel wins the lady. Dude, it was Leia. so cute seeing Sam and Christian on the couch. Oh, yeah. Just cuddle up watching it together. Christian refuses to be on the show, but he lives with us. And we were cuddling last night watching The Office. I've known him since he was five and I was five. It was great. So he said that he wanted me to come along since all of our other friends, they made up excuses not to go. They have told me this, but Mark doesn't know. <laughs> since I just got back home the day before, I was still exhausted. So I point blank refused Mark's request. I told him that Leia was a lost cause and I wasn't going to fight some people I'd never seen for her. Dude, 100%. Yeah. Mark started begging me, saying that Leia is the love of his life and that he needs my help. Bro, she's not it. Oh. She is not it. Mm -mm. I refused again. He then says that he'll go on his own, but I told him that he probably shouldn't. He should not. I mean, what do you say to someone that, like that, like at that point? I mean, you've already told him a hundred times, like, hey man, you gotta leave her. You gotta, there are better options out there. Like I've seen this happen before where they just don't listen. And what you've seen someone not get in a fight, okay. but like you give them a relationship advice and they're not listening, and then it gets yeah, it's really to hard to give point. relationship advice to the people that are entangled with it. Wait, question if I asked you to go, like, come with me to fight someone, what would the cause have to be? Would it be over a girl if I'm like, hey, the chick I'm trying to see has this other guy? No, because it's okay, no, no, that would be I, that would be silly if like. It would, it would have to be like that person was physical with you or someone you cared about. Okay. And we were like, I'm like, Sam, I'm going to meet him tonight. You need to come with me and beat him up. Does he have a friend too? Is it a fair fight? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, so it's like, his friend's it's like about two on two. Size. It's two and on he's two. A runner. He's a runner. Yeah. I would, I would go. And we got John on our side. And he's like the wild card comes out like a hungry mongrel. John is a wild card. Yeah. If you get him in a fight, I do not know what it would happen. Yeah. And we did all train Muay Thai together. So we kind of have that. That is true. John had to stop because he was getting too aggressive. Yeah. Wait, is like, that I true? need to go no, down the, the peace route and do more meditating rather than is that what start he said? the day with violence. Well, he did do meditation rather than doing Muay Thai. Is that what, it, is that what he said? I think he wanted to start the day with peace and not violence. Bro, it, it was me it was meditative peace. What, Muay Thai? Yeah. Yeah, in our mind. Like, but probably him, like, he was probably like, I'm trying to kill. Because whenever he starts something, he goes all the way. That's true. what I love about him. That's true. Yeah. But I woke up Sunday morning to more than 300 messages on my phone from Mark and all our friends. Long story short, Mark went over to Derek's place to bring Leia back. He ended up getting his ass kicked by Derek and his friends. They only stopped when Leia asked them to. I called Mark and told him he should probably talk to a lawyer or something, but he refused since Leia asked him not to escalate the situation. Oh, dude, this is so bad. I then told him that he was being dumb and this triggered him so much. He started saying how I was a bitch and a snake for not backing him up and how I was a fake friend. I was so irritated at this point, so I told Mark that he deserved to get drunk and that it made sense why Leia preferred Derek over him. Oh, that feels like poking the knife a little too far. 
He hung up on me and we haven't spoken since. Since then, my other friends have been saying that I'm an a-hole for how I handle the conversation, but they do agree Mark is a dumbass. So am I the a-hole? If it was for a better cause, you would be, but dude, ah. Uh... Have you ever been rallied to be like, we got to go fight this guy? Um, There have been like situations where they were like, if this person shows up and this person does, you got to be there. Uh -huh. All right, I'll do it. Yeah. Only reason I had to like throw people out of a party, but like that's kind of, but it wasn't a fight. It was just kind of like dragging someone little, out. Little push. Yeah. Oh, I, I once, one of my friends was choking this dude out for like a thing. One of our girls in our group. Wow. This is in Australia. Oh, you know, okay. Story time. Okay. okay story, story time, time at the end. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. It's a big so, tease. Some relevant comments. Big philosopher 2735 says not the a-hole. He's delusional. Your other friends should have been honest with him. Maybe if everyone was honest, he'd get it. Good for you for not getting involved in the fight. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. Like, Good point. It, it, OP just would have probably gotten his ass kicked too. Yeah. Or worse, would have kicked their ass and then gotten sued. Yo, yeah. That's a good point. And then OP responds, we've all been trying to get him to leave her, but he keeps insisting that she's the most spectacular person in the world beneath all of the shit she gets up to. I mean, you have to go through a lot of shit to get to that spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> like, so... Update. Some of my friends and I ended up going out with Mark to see how he was doing. We didn't want to go to his parents' place since Leia was now living there with him and we didn't want to see her. Whoa, that's Wait, crazy. Leia is living with Mark's parents? That's nuts. I'm confused. He does look very beaten up. Black eye, bruises all over his face and arms, busted lip, etc. But he was, surprisingly, in a good mood and even insisted that I didn't have to apologize for how I spoke last time. He told us that Derek ended up dumping Leia a few days after the fight. Apparently, he asked Leia to dump Mark. She refused and they argued. I'll spare you most of it. Their conversation ended with Leia being kicked out of his apartment in the middle of the night and Mark had to come pick her up. Oh. He has refused his parents in our request to escalate the situation at Leia's request. Bro, Mark, you're just getting Derek's sloppy seconds, dude. Like she didn't even want to be with you until she was literally kicked out. Yeah, just abusing that emotional support yeah, and that dude, money. Leia is, has this guy wrapped around her finger, and she knows it, and she's taking advantage of it. True. Which is super fun. I bet Mark's parents' place is nice, though. Yeah. Also, how are Mark's parents not stepping in? Because yeah. if I was Mark's parents, I would be like, Leia is not staying here. You were, Yeah, get out. Yeah. Unless it's like one of those parents where it's like, we're going to give you your space. and da -da 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 -da. That's silly. I think when parents give kids too much freedom to like stay at the house, they just ended up like kind of becoming a little deadbeat. Yeah. You can kind of sense that off of people. Yeah. Like I have friends that are like, like friends in high school that had super wealthy parents and like some of them just stay with their parents forever and never leave. My ex was like that. Yeah. Not a good look. Not a good look. Yeah. Oh, well. Not, especially if you're not trying, you know? Yeah, not pursuing Like if you're trying, something. then that do, makes sense, but... Do something, get in a lane. Mark has said that Leia has been very depressed about Derek dumping her and spends a lot of the days crying. Mark just says he's incredibly thankful to be there to comfort her and emotionally support her. He keeps on saying that when it comes down to it, Leia chose him over Derek and nothing can take that away. No, Did that's not the, the... You were the last option. Did she <laughs> You were like the default option. Yeah. It was like, oh, like you go to Chipotle and like, hey, can I have chicken? And they're like, oh, we don't have any chicken, but you can have fajitas. Like, I didn't want fajitas. I just got fajitas because there was no chicken. Yeah. And Derek, I mean, Leah could have went with Derek, but so there were options. Yeah, I'm no, kind of Leah confused. Could, Leah couldn't have gone with Derek. No, she did. Leah, Leah, kick, like, Leah got kicked out. No, no, no. The reason why she got kicked out is because she decided to still be with oh, Mark. Oh, that's true. Than, that's true. That's so true. So that's what I'm confused about. Like, why didn't... I guess, you know what? Now that you say it, I guess she did kind of choose Mark, but she chose, she chose Mark and him. It was yeah. just like, it, it wasn't like, I'm going to be with him only. It was just like, I want both of you. I'm confused by that. Just one man isn't enough man for Leia, you know? Like I said above, Leia has decided to return living with Mark. She can technically go to her mother's house, but she doesn't want to. Here is the real kicker. Mark says that he has a very good reason to believe Leia might be in the early stages of pregnancy now. Yo, no. My friends and I assumed the child was Derek's, but Mark insisted that regardless, it would be his kid. <gasps> 
No, he's baby trapping, dog. We asked him to get a paternity test and he refused saying he can't do that to Leia. Oh, because he thinks, oh. We told him that the relationship is toxic, but he didn't want to hear it since that was a matter of perspective. Also, his parents have no clue about the potential pregnancy. <gasps> he says that in the future, he doesn't want us to say anything about Leia unless it is the absolute truth. His speech of singing her praises. My other friends and I left pretty stunned. I'm thinking at this stage, I'll slowly be removing myself from Mark's life. It sucks since I've known him for a long time and do enjoy his company, but I don't think I'll be able to remain friends with him in good faith if I'm not able to speak honestly with him. And there are some relevant comments, but what do you think about OP distancing himself from Mark mm. at this point? Like, do you think that's a good move? Oh, 100%. You do not want to be influenced like that because this is what's going to happen. This is the road they're about to go down. She's pregnant. Mark is going to be, you know, raising this child. He's going to be a part of raising that child yeah. with Mark. And Leia's not going to stop. No, she. That's that's his Leia's point. not going to change. And then that means OP is just dragged into more random fights at the flagpole. <sighs> it's just a huge headache. It's a migraine. It is a migraine. But let's see what some of the relevant comments have to say. So Kamaruda says, "Dude is trying to ruin his life as fast as possible." <laughs> OP says. 100% he is. It's tragic to watch him give up everything for this pointless, quote unquote, relationship. And Lotus Biscuff Baby says, forgive me for this, but me personally, I wouldn't even bother with someone like Mark. Yeah. He's delusional and stupid at this point, and he can't even see how manipulative Leia is being. He's willing to throw his whole life away for a girl who has no respect for him and for a baby that probably isn't his. OP, it's probably best to just keep your distance and go no contact with Mark, seeing as he's made his choice. OP responds, I'll be keeping my distance. It's just so awful that he's throwing his life away for the most useless reason. And then Butter Pie Scottish says, I in Mark's mother's place would kick Leia out of the house. That's what I was, that's what we were saying, yeah. dude. Like, like I would the the I feel like the parents are kind of being like, they're just going along with it. Yeah. You know? They're not like being like, you gotta do this, man. This yeah, I feel thing. like good parents would intervene. Yeah, intervention. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. And I would tell Mark that the child would not enter my house without a paternity test and I would no longer be supporting him financially. I don't know if that's the right move. No longer like supporting, like cutting him off completely because that could just drive him even more towards Leia and just like yeah. darker things. Opie says, if his parents try anything, he'll go no contact with him. Mm. He told us that between his parents, dad and stepmom and Leia, he's choosing Leia. It really does suck and I feel like it is extremely unfair to them. It does suck. This sucks. Yeah. This sucks, dude. That man is just in a reality distortion field. He doesn't He doesn't know. He doesn't know up from down, left from right. I mean, he's just in love. He's I just don't think he'll so in love. Ever leave though cuz he's got he's been drugged through the deepest mud yeah. and he's still stuck with her. I don't know if there's anything that uh, besides breaking up with him. I don't think there's anything that he could or can do. Yeah. Or see yeah, like I like I, I it feels like he's just he's just there. Yeah. So I guess with with what OP should do, this this guy is choosing to wreck his life. You've tried and tried. And maybe you I mean, do you say like, hey, like I really see you ruining your life over this girl? I can't be there. Yeah. To see that. Whenever I mean, do you even say like if you ever break up with her, like I would be happy to be friends with you again, or do you just leave silently? Like, do you get, I do mean, you, you've probably already said that hundreds of yeah. times at this point. So do you give Mark an explanation or do you just slowly distance? Just slowly distance because yeah. you've been there left and right Yeah, and he's yeah. just not getting it. Yeah. I feel like that's probably the right thing to do to slowly distance. Mm. But damn, like, it's, it's rough because this was like one of his best friends. Honestly, you're going to have to give Mark the, an award. Mm, what's the award? Uh, biggest Simp Award. Biggest Simp Award. <laughs> the, Man, is Civic so hard? Is, have you seen a bigger simp so so far? This is a, the one I I feel like no. Recently. I feel like this might be the biggest simple word for sure. But I would love to know what you would do. Like, would you leave Mark without an explanation? Like, would you just slowly distance yeah. yourself? Would you say something? Do you think OP should have done anything else? Let us know in the comments below. But I do have a story from Australia. Ooh, about the, the fight? About the fight. Yeah, yeah. So when I was in Australia, this is like kind of like the only fight that I've really been in. Okay. I'm a pacifist. Um, He's a nice guy. But I was in Australia. We were at like a, a bar with me and one of like my friends that is a girl, not a girlfriend, but like okay. a friend So how many people in total? I think we were with like maybe like five people. Five people. Yeah, okay. but it was like the main characters are me, my friend, and this girl. And then what were the other two? Guy, girl, guy, guy. And there was these, uh, I think it was 
uh, maybe a, a, a girl and a guy. Okay, cool. But uh, this guy kept slapping my friend Charlie's ass, like, like repeatedly. And I think my other friend saw it like the second time and was like, yo, dude, if like you do that again, yeah. I'm going to... I'm going to have to do something about yeah. it. Like, like, please do not touch her. And then this guy does it again. And then like my friend kind of gets into his face and he's like, and like, I, I, I kind of like, not, not as much as him, but like, I'm like, Hey, like, please stop, dude. Then he does it again. And then after he does it, he hits my friend in the back of the head. But, and then, but my, my friend Ishan has done like, uh, he, like he did a lot of wrestling in high school. And so Ishan just turns around, like sees red and tackles him to the floor. And now he's on the floor, like choking this dude out. I had gone to another area and I see just like these two people rolling out on the ground and I'm, I don't even recognize it's them. And so I just pulled like this guy off of this dude that's cho like, like being choked out. I realize it's Ishan and I'm like, holy sh Dude, are you like, like, what is happening right now? That guy is like, I was like, namaste, bro, namaste. Um, and it eventually no. like breaks up. I try to like, like basically bring peace between the two. And then we just leave that bar and go somewhere else. Oh. But yeah, it was, I, I, I mean, I wasn't really involved in the fight, but I, yeah. uh, it was, <laughs> it was the only time that I've seen him just go ballistic on someone <sighs> honestly deserved though. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But dang, that is high tension. Ugh. I know, I know, I know. Man, that's crazy. You know what's crazy? What? Do you have another story? Oh, do you have an okay story time? I do. Yeah, it was yeah. just simple. What? Whenever you guys were talking about the therapist, like the guy being a therapist, you were talking about the eighteen-year-old being a therapist. I thought I could be a therapist at sixteen with uh, one of my high school girlfriends. I remember texting her and realizing she had like some stuff to work through, and I was like, I just had this. One time she sent me something, I don't know what it was, but I just remember getting a grin on my face and being like, I can fix her. <laughs> and then I just like went down a two year relationship <sighs> and it was, it was, you know, you know, how oh, those goes, man. but it was pretty, pretty rough. I just remember that moment thinking I was like going to save her and oh, be dude. the best thing ever. Yeah. Oh, I actually uh, saw her on a dating app recently. Wait, this girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she has turned completely goth mommy and it's kind of crazy. My you mom still was like, it? she's got neck tattoos and she's been in magazine cover. Da, da, da. I'm like, man, I should have. She's been in a magazine cover? Yeah. Like for like a, like ink or whatever like that. Oh, really? Honestly, let me, let's, let's look her up. Let's see if uh we're not gonna put this out there either. are you still into it i'd just be i'd be funny i'd be goofy i'm not really into it i don't <laughs> even know if i what i'd do i don't see her but yeah dude um she's into like anime and the, i Crazy. think she does like twitch stuff too now so good for her she's she's killing it hey there we go she's leaning into the whole anime twitch yeah getting her own army of simps yeah you might yeah. like her now you were the original simp you were the OG your... simp dude and yeah. now she has her whole army yeah i uh you were gonna. You were there for her to walk so she could run. Yeah, there, there it is. There it is. Yeah, Bro, running with her simp army. Yeah, conquering all the villages. But you know what I want you to run into? Uh, this next story. No, this next phone call. Oh, it's a phone call. It is a phone call. Let's go. Let's go. I caught my boyfriend cheating on me every day of the week before visiting my apartment. Every day of the week. You the, wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't have like cut it off after the first time. You had to see it so the weekends are safe. You know that he's definitely not doing uh, that. So Obi continues. I found out the day before I was supposed to go to his hometown with them and meet his mom. So I left them in the most epic way and wrote a viral blog post. This happened quite a few years ago, but rather than telling you the whole story, it's probably better for you to Google breaking up with the cheater and you'll come across a medium article called breaking up with a cheater. So they'll never forget you. That is a true story of how I broke up with my cheating ex-boyfriend. This was back in 2016. And that article has been shared and read over 100,000 times at that point. I got the last laugh and I'm proud of that. Oh, by the way, my name is Sam. Bye now. No, it's right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Breaking up with a cheater, Sam. How long is it? 19 minute read. <laughs> I mean, we gotta, or we call her. We read it and then call her. That that seems like a- Read it and then call her? I mean, honestly. I'm all right. I'm kind of, I'm kind of down. Are we going to read this whole article? And then we can call her. Sam and then we're going to call her. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we love when our fans are a little famous. Kind of cool. A little famous fan. All right. Cool. Let's read it. All right. 
Let's read this. I'm I'm kind of, I'm pretty excited. So, I've always hated that my boyfriend and I lost things all the time, such as keys, phones, and debit cards. We were scatterbrained and thought 10 thoughts at once, and in a way, that linked us together. But this time, it ended us, and I couldn't be happier. Ooh. We'd been planning to go to New York City with my ballroom dance partner that weekend. There was a dance competition happening about five minutes from where he grew up, so my partner and I were training for it intensely, and I was getting excited about seeing the areas of New York my boyfriend grew up in. I'd only been there three times, twice for choir in college, and once for a spontaneous romantic getaway with someone else I dated. Okay, so finally getting to see this place through the boyfriend's eyes. Also kind of cute that they dance together. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, would you want your wife to dance with you? Like, yeah, yeah, little, yeah. Have I, a little set? Yeah, I, I would go I would go dancing with my ex all the time. We would go to like, like where, like we go to the, um, these dancing clubs where like they're all like 60 and 70 and we would swing dance together it was really fun please don't let that stop you from doing that with your no no i'm definitely gonna keep doing it but i was more excited to see his own life he seemed very lost in boston since he moved a few months ago and he seemed to run back to new york any chance he could why is he running back to new york all the time sam hmm? are you suspicious i Guys. see you i see you but i see maybe you a little red flag who knows all right so I enjoyed showing him around the city. I know and love introducing him to my friends, which because of his strong personality, he didn't always get along with. Another red flag, baby. And I still wanted to show him many more places in the city when he wasn't so busy running back and forth on the weekends for school, work, and seeing family in New York. But we had been seeing each other for months now, and I was going to meet the people that were important to him. Even though he had always treated me well when I was with him, I was always curious to see how he was around his close family and friends. You know, because the real test of who a person is, is like how they treat the people that they should have a loving, caring bond with. Mm, yeah. In addition, everything he showed me about Park Slope. Wow. I hope, I hope he's really calling it out. The neighborhood he grew up in seemed absolutely gorgeous and dreamlike. I wanted to share those cherished memories he had with him. Unfortunately, planning this the week of was a little difficult because I stayed over at his place on Tuesday night that week. And sometime between us stopping at the liquor store and coming back to his place, we misplaced his phone and we couldn't find it in the morning. So Facebook messages was our main communication, which was really hard since he didn't have Wi-Fi at his house. He was planning on coming over on Thursday at 5 p.m. so we could book the hotel for the weekend since none of his family could let the three of us stay over. Interesting. A little interesting. But I was getting excited for the dance competition and for seeing the area he called home. I needed to pick up some spray tan for the Latin dance portion. So I drove to a beauty place to pick up. Is that, is that what? I guess you have to do a spray tan for the I Latin dance. I guess dancing. so. She's into it. When I found out they didn't have the brand that my more experienced tanning friend told me to get for this competition, I started driving home. Darn. As I started driving back home to regroup and figure out what to do next, I needed a spray tan. I had tan lines that would show my dress, and I tried to logistically think through the tan. Perhaps I can enlist my boyfriend's help with this by asking him to scrub me down, examine my arms and legs for areas of hair I forgot to shave down, and then spray tan me naked. You know, to avoid tan lines. Wink, wink. He was planning on coming by at five, although he is notorious for being late. Hmm, why is he late yeah, all the time? Yeah, why is he late all the time? Hmm. Hmm. I pull out my phone at the next red light to Facebook message him this somewhat sexy, but probably not proposal. And bzz, bzz, 3.13 p.m. on Thursday, I hear the phone buzzing somewhere in my car. His phone, it's in my car. He'll be so happy to know I found it. Good thing I'm just around the corner from home. The thing is probably dying after two days and I need to call it one more time to find out exactly where it is in my messy live-in car. It is. I pulled into the driveway and called it. Sure enough, it buzzed loudly under his seat. Of course, it fell under the passenger seat just enough so that it was out of sight. And just in time, the screen was about to turn off. So it's a good thing I found it before it died and was significantly harder to find. But it didn't turn off fast enough for me to see the one thing that changed everything. Tinder push notifications, two of them. Yikes. You don't have Tinder when you have a dance partner. Yeah. Maybe he's just looking for dance partners to practice with when she's not there. Yeah. Keep an open mind. Yeah. Yeah. Come, Come on. on. Tinder is where you find all the best dance partners, right? Yep. Yeah, they, they can dance. They can dance. They can shake it. You can shake it. I don't know. You can throw I'm it down. Never on Tinder. So. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like Tinder. We don't like Tinder. No. My heart died a little along with his phone when I saw that. Ah. Oh. 
No, there's no way he would do that. I know he was on Tinder when we first met and he told me without me pushing for it several times, most recently about two weeks ago, that he uninstalled it from his phone. There's no way. So basically he said he had uninstalled it, but alas, he has not. El pantalón es el fuego. Uh, translation, pants on fire. I must be crazy. Maybe I just saw something that wasn't there. Who knows? There's only one way. I put the phone in my charger. Thank God he has a droid like mine and started driving so it could charge. I didn't know where I was driving. I guess I figured if I drove in circles in one direction, my head would stop spinning in the opposite direction. But I just got more anxious. I wanted to turn it on now and just verify that the app isn't even on his phone. That I just imagined the push notifications that maybe he actually was just turning girls down out of courtesy from before we were dating. After all, he was the one that just insisted yesterday that this is the happiest he has ever been in a monogamous relationship. Then why are you cheating though? Yeah, why you got Tinder? Why bro? you got Tinder on there? Is quick, quick break in question. When you're dating someone and you see like a notification from Tinder or something, is that kind of a turnoff from you? Yeah. Dating someone or like boyfriend, girlfriend? Dating. No. Because I got to like, if we're not boyfriend, girlfriend, I got to like close it back. Yeah. But I like, I would turn off my, like if I was ever going on a date yeah. with someone, I would turn off the, the Tinder notifications. Dude, I have been on a few dates and like my Tinder or Hinge, all of a sudden, all of a sudden pops it off. pop off. It's like. It's a little like, I feel like it, it feels like a little rude almost when that yeah. happens. I don't know. That is a good question. Yeah. I remember like I was, it was maybe like two weeks to seeing this girl I was seeing in Bali and like her phone went off and there was a Tinder notification. I'm like, Pfft. oh, cause I don't meet people through dating apps. So yeah, you know, like, I don't have bit. dating apps. So I, it, it, that feel, is, it is rude. It right. feels a little rude. Yeah. feels a little rude, but I would love to know your thoughts. It probably like you really, there should be no reason if you're not like official and exclusive. So it's not really bad. It just feels like, it's like maybe the same as if you were checking your phone yeah. during a date, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I just imagine the push notifications that maybe he actually was just turning girls down out of courtesy from before we were dating. <laughs> oh, man. After all, he was the one that just insisted yesterday that this is the happiest he has ever been in a monogamous relationship. After all, he calls me all the time when I'm not with him, sometimes up to two or three hours a day. After all, he taught me how to cook and encouraged me towards the dreams I have. After all, he told me he loved me in the car on the way to the grocery store out of the blue and he was completely nerve wracked that he did it because he meant it, but he didn't want to say it so soon and scare me away. Then the battery life hit 5%. I pressed the button to turn on the phone. The startup time was excruciatingly slow. It's okay, just breathe. You're going to look through his apps, not even his messages or everything. Just look to see if he has an app. Once you see it's not there, you can calm down and realize that you have your sweet, caring, hilarious. I found the app under T-Tinder. Lying, womanizing, leeching app you've had all along. I couldn't even pretend that he just forgot to delete it because he got a new phone a month ago. He had to purposely install it for it to be on there. Hmm. Maybe when he like was transferring the data over, it just downloaded all the apps he had, which happens. Like when I get, when you get a new iPhone, they just transfer all the phone apps. Oh yeah. It's true. Yeah. Do I have a right to see what's on the app? After a few seconds hesitation, I decided I did. Yeah. What do you think, Riley? Oh, hundred percent. If you're like saying I love you to someone, you have every right in the book. I feel like seeing the notifications is fine, but I feel like looking through someone's messages is is almost never a good look it is a even if you have cause yeah because that's a road once you go down you can't go back yeah but i mean it seems like she did the road was already destroyed when she saw the messages because he lied yeah i know someone that is married and is on tinder and she literally just waits to get matches and for men to tell her she's pretty and then her confidence gets bolstered enough that she closes the app and has a lovely monogamous time with her husband and her husband is okay with that which if he's okay with it, then it's fine. Whatever. Surely since I know, I don't know if I would be okay That's with that. That's not a healthy, it's not healthy way to get your like words of affirmation. You no, know? not at all. <laughs> Maybe your husband should be telling you you're pretty more. I don't know. Surely since I know I don't give him nearly as many compliments as he would like since he's always fishing for them, it could be a similar thing. Oh, but men are not on the dating apps for that reason. No. They're on the dating apps for a whole nother reason. No. And OP says it most definitely was not a similar thing. <laughs> 
Based on what I saw, it looked like he spoke and made a few conversational connections with girls he talked to, gave them his number saying, it's easier to text than unmatch them, presumably once they texted him. Only three girls were on his Tinder and one of them he had a conversation with. One other, one other girl he just matched with and out of a little bit of spite, I unmatched her for him. Freaking out, I texted my friend what happened. She started responding to calm me down. At this point, I was still willing to see him and have a civilized conversation with him about this. And she agreed that it's healthy for me to do that rather than hold it in like nothing happened. But here, I was faced with two ways to look at the impending situation. Society's guilt trip of why are you going through your boyfriend's phone? Don't you trust him? And the girl power message of you have a reason to. You saw a sign he might be cheating without looking for it and looked into it to confirm yourself. That's 100% valid. It's kind of like what we talked about. I think we talked about this in a, another story where um, it's it's kind of like when a, the police have a probable cause to enter a residence and then they enter. It's like if you you're a police person is a police like officer is not allowed to just bust into your house yeah. without a warrant. But if the door is ajar and they see like drugs or guns or whatever, or like a murder, then they have probable cause to enter the residence. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now hearing that again, I feel like you can do that with phones. Like if you see a notification that it's suspicious, you have probable cause to, to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might add this as a uh, asterisk to what I said earlier. Yeah. 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 I like that. I wrestled with both thoughts, two conflicting ideas that were keeping me from going further down the rabbit hole. But the fact of the matter is there are girls he's giving his number out to and talking to. I mean, at this point, though, it's like, I feel like this is a deal breaker right here. Yeah. Did I have the courage to look through his messages and find out if he had been meeting up with them? My hand was shaking. I was taking deep breaths in. I don't know if I have the courage to do it. I swallowed hard, staring at the ceiling of my car and blinked. Then my hand shook enough for me to just press it mid hand tremor. My body made the choice for me before my mind did. 3.52 p.m. That was when I saw the messages from his best friend from when they worked at the Empire State Building in New York, just two days prior. I didn't even have to scroll up to see them. They were just there. He was bragging to his friend that on Monday, he slept with a girl he met on Tinder and then came to my place to sleep with me. It's so fucked. That's messed up. And the fact that the friend is like, just being like, yeah, dude, that's sick. Like, that's so yeah, bad. Not a, Yeah, not a good guy. Not a good guy. I don't think like, I've never had a friend brag to me about cheating. You got good friends. Uh, have you? No. Yeah, you have good friends. Yeah. I don't really have friends that have game like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got friends trying to get girlfriends. They can't juggle. Yeah, dude. I Yeah, it just, it, I feel like it's just, it would just be too hard. <laughs> yeah. When you're a lover boy, it's pretty hard. Yeah, we're lover pretty boys. Tough. We're lover boys. We just want to dedicate all our time to one lady. Yep. You know, shower her with flowers, flowers and kisses. And love and music. And visits to the zoo to see the manatees. The manatees. Yeah. The otters. Penguins. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> So the spinning came to a screeching halt. Nothing existed in that moment, not a damn thing. The only thing that was in focus was this message that revealed my greatest nightmares. And then it disappeared briefly as my eyes swelled up. Blurriness ensued and my mind was numb. Normally I have 10 thoughts going in my head at once, but in this moment, nothing in my head remotely resembled a language anyone could understand. After a few minutes of feeling like I was in a vegetable state, a few thoughts went through my head. One, my New York trip, was now canceled. Yeah. I'd be an idiot if I went somewhere so close to his very large family for a dance competition, even especially with what was about to happen with us next. Two, the decision is easy here. I had told him several times that cheating is 100% an instant deal breaker for me. I catch you cheating. I don't even have to say it. It's assumed we are done. It's not like I didn't give him an out. I was open to the idea of an open relationship and us being the primary, but he insisted that he didn't want to see other girls. Yo. Wow. Why he chose this over that situation is completely beyond me. Probably because he just wanted to be one-sided, one open. Yeah. But this made it really easy to know what to do next. I don't tolerate cheaters, no matter how good the sex is, dang. <laughs> no matter what they teach me to cook and no matter how much they may try to beg. And the swifter and more straightforward I can be about this, the better for both of us. Yeah. He's already humiliated himself by getting found out. So he doesn't need to help by ugly crying or trying to come up with a pathetic excuse that even a dog wouldn't believe. There is no explanation necessary here. It's simply over. Three, 
I need to drink heavily with friends immediately after this ordeal is over. As the strong, independent women I have, I have friends that are drawn to me for my strength and will want to make sure I'm mentally okay so I can continue helping as many people as I can. Nice. And so the plan started. 4.13, I pull into the driveway. I stop and text both of my roommates. So I'm going to warn both of you, I'm going to have a really ugly breakup and I expect it to start at five. I roll my eyes as I say this though. He was always late, so the likelihood of 5.30 or even six when he said he'd be there at five was likely. Then I paused in reflection for a moment. It made so much sense now. This is why he would always come late. This is why he told me to come by his place at seven. This is why he didn't want me coming over without me telling him. I opened his phone again and scrolled up. Yep, confirmation he slept with girls right after work before he saw me. One weekend when I thought he was away, he spent it with a girl in her hotel room and used all her holes, bro. My heart was in my stomach and it felt like a ticking time bomb that threatened to explode any minute. I can't believe this never registered in my head. This is the man, not a man, a man child. I thought was loyal and amazing and he was everything but. I wanted to get sick to remove this feeling. Instead, I walked into my house, my makeup bag in hand from when I made up my face this morning haphazardly in the car. One of my roommates was still home. We never really got along until it was confirmed he was moving out at the end of this month. For some reason, he's been super nice to me now. He stares at me and says, did you see my message? I look down at my phone. Sounds like an excellent time to go for a walk and grab a cupcake mix I've been hankering for. He was just trying to make me laugh, but all I could say was the truth. He's been cheating on me, I croaked, eyes swelling up with tears threatening to spill. At least five girls this month, and who knows how many before then since he lost his phone. Rough. My roommate looked at me wide-eyed, let out a sad moan, then eyes turned over with pity. He stood up and outstretched his arms for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Tears didn't fall, but I sobbed a few times before saying, I just feel so stupid for not seeing this. No, 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 no. This has nothing to do with you. He started shaking his head. Nothing, you hear me? It's nothing to do with you and everything to do with him, which I think is like, that's great advice coming to the roommate. Great advice. Who would have thought the roommate that my boyfriend couldn't stand the past few months would be the one to comfort me like this when that same boy shattered my heart? Not me, that's for sure. I grab my makeup bag. I want to look drop dead gorgeous when I do this. My roommate clapped his hands approvingly. Do it up. I went to the bathroom mirror to wash my face down. My foundation is going to be flawless, I think to myself. I'm going to pick just the right shade of pink for my lips. I'm going to use purple eyeshadow to really bring them out and eyeliner just the way he likes it. I texted my friend I was messaging earlier the newest installment, and she makes plans to see me out in Harvard Square. Ironically, very close to where I first met him. To recoup and comfort. I text another friend of mine he really liked and wanted to have a threesome with uh, and tell her to come out with us because I really, really need her comfort. She agrees without me telling her anything. I'll tell her in person. I wonder if he hooked up with her. That's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. My conspiracy is they may have hooked up. Yeah. But yeah. let's see. He gets around town. I look at the messages his friend and him exchanged. Is he the only one that knew? No, because based on that conversation, he talked to his brother. That fight he had with his older brother claimed he grabbed my ass in public sometimes. And when his brother reprimanded him, he brought up his transgressions of cheating on his wife. No, the fight was his brother telling him to stop cheating on me and be loyal. What was the reason he gave to his friend? I'm young and I have a high sex drive. Who is this person? I barely recognize him. He never struck me as a bro. He always never said it and claimed that working in a gym was an intellectual prison, but he seemed to have no problem using bro at the end of every other sentence with his friend. Mm. I remember thinking, I'll never forget how I looked when I broke up with him if I took a picture of myself on his phone. What if I sent it to his friend right now? He has no way of finding out that I know already. He's mid-transit to my place without his phone, most likely stopping to get his dick sucked along the way. Oh, there's pain in this. There's a lot there's of a pain. Lot of pain. Great rider. Yeah. I tried to get the lighting right in the bathroom and I put my hand up and gave a solid middle finger next to my perfectly primed face. Before sending it, I wrote in the caption, got caught bro, sent. If nothing else, when he talks to his friend, he can look at my titillating, taunting face. Now for the plan for the breakup. I thought how I wanted it to look while I grabbed the two pairs of his sweatpants I had. One pair of clean underwear he left one time, arguably. This was indirectly encouraging him to go sleep with another girl immediately after all this happened, but I really didn't give a shit what he did after he left as long as he didn't 
destroy a property. The awful perfume he gave me that smelled like my grandmother and the small gift of the constitution on stained parchment I bought him when it reminded me of him and his government studies while I was looking through Cracker Barrel's country store. Oh, wait, government studies? Why that's is that? bro. That's a bro. Yeah, the, the people that like the government a lot, like... Really? It's it, low-key. They're kind of weird. I've never known about... They give about off horse girl vibes, just gonna government, say. Government? I had no idea. Like, yeah. when I think of finance, like, when I think of bro, I think, like, finance bro. Or, like, econ major, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I resisted the urge to write cheating horror on the paper bag. If he saw it before I gave it to him, he probably would have too much time to prep himself and start the excuses. I know better. He lost any chance of a respectful conversation when he decided to cheat on me over five times. <sighs> but I wasn't going to be the lady that screams and shouts at him. I wasn't going to name call. I wasn't going to cry or otherwise express with sadness how much he actually hurt me. I wasn't going to punch him or run him over with my car, no matter how much I wanted to. No, I know if I did any of that, he could just brush that off and recover from that easily because then he could position me in his head as the crazy one. The way I wanted to break up with him would be much more memorable and it would cut off any chances he has of recovering quickly. If he clearly knew this was wrong and it would hurt me to see this as evidence in his messages to his friend, I was going to react in a way that would stand out as the woman that took him down perfectly. And that he was stupid to ever cheat on because no woman would ever react as calm and collected the way I did after he smashed my heart into the floor repeatedly. I put on my high heels so he could get a better look at my ass. <laughs> nice. And since I know he loved looking at it so much, one last time before I leave his ass. Uh. 510. He's not here yet. He probably won't be for a while. I looked at the phone again. He had one good friend I was really looking forward to seeing. I checked the messages he had with him. They all seemed innocent and happy, only talking about me and how happy I make him. My heart agonized over this a little. Clearly, he wanted him to think he has been a better man. But even if this is true, he still hurt me. I'll have to tell him later on Facebook what really happened because I doubt he'll tell the truth. His friend would later respond in a caring, loving way towards me because he knows that it hurts and no one deserves that pain, but he'd still defend my boyfriend. I mean, how can you defend him though? I looked at his phone and see the messages he sent to other girls. He even called some of the girls Freulian, the name he gave me when he met me. Oh, he told me it was German for young woman. I found out later from my German fluent friend that it was a condescending term equivalent to naive little girl. And then, he likes German too. Ooh, yeah, I know. Wow. That's when it hit me. These girls have no idea what's going on. I had not a speck of anger towards any of them. If anything, I was worried. He's clearly a predator and these girls are his prey. These girls think he's an innocent, outspoken, charming man. I never got his test results and I didn't even know if he was clean still and neither did these women. They simply thought he was a single guy and that didn't get to explore Boston much yet since he moved here and he has a friend that got him familiar with areas north of Cambridge. Ugh. So I got my notebook out and started writing all of their names and numbers from his phone that I could identify as even remotely possible that he slept with or interacted with them on a romantic level. I'd text them in a group the next day to tell them I was his monogamous ex-girlfriend that found out he was seeing all of them while dating me and that for medical purposes, they should get tested as soon as possible if they were ever with him just to be sure. Okay, I was about to be like, is that too much, too far? No, she's but, thinking about, she's yeah, thinking about, point. yeah, sexual safety, which I think is important. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. didn't even think about that. Their responses were loving and so apologetic that I had to go through this. One girl never met him, but was going to, and I saved her from a lot of pain and remorse by telling her and helping her decide to not see him. She said, loyal and kind men do exist. You just have to keep searching. Good luck. Aww. And that made me feel a small amount of hope for not just me, but other women as well. 528, he rang my doorbell, showtime. But I was hoping to get a little bit more prepared for the situation, so I ran with it. I slipped his phone in my back pocket behind my phone so he couldn't see that I had already found it. As far as he knew, it was still in my car and dead as a doornail. I took my notebook with the girl's names and numbers in one hand and the bag of his stuff in the other hand, and after checking in the mirror to make sure everything fell into place, descended the stairs to my back porch. He was waiting at my front porch, but I wouldn't let him get a chance to get in my house or I knew he'd rain down hell on me before leaving. I pretended not to see him as I opened my car door and put the bag and notebook in it. I made sure to lock it quickly so he couldn't lunge for my car. I turned around and saw him. Oh, hey, 
I said, flashing a smile, trying to not a flicker of a clue cross my hazel eyes as he always loved staring deep into them and complimenting them. He had mentioned that he was bringing a surprise for me, but that got pushed out of my mind when I found out he cheated on me enough times to have an effing freshman frat boy orgy with all the people he cheated with. The packaging looked like it was Thai food. Probably not since he mentioned at one point Thai food makes him sick, but I never got to look to find out what kind of food it was. My one regret in this entire master plan was not taking the food from him before I set everything in motion. Oh. One last meal on his dime. I reached to my car and tell him that I meant to clean it out a little before he arrived since we'll be riding in it tomorrow after work to New York City, but I really should pull it out into the street so I can access everything better. Okay, he said tightly, but can you please just let me check your car really quick for my phone? I really need my phone. If for some reason I had any benefit of the doubt for him up to this point that he clearly did not deserve, it was eradicated in reading his facial expressions as he said this. The tightened jaw, the panic in his narrowing of his eyes, and his slight hand tremor as he stood on the gray stairs to my front porch, restraining himself from lunging at my car to claw for his phone. The only thing that would have made this all better for me would be if it was raining, <laughs> knowing what I was about to do next. I got one good last look at him in his cheap suit from his receptionist job at a television station, his oversized dress shoes that were probably borrowed from his older brother, whom he all but worshiped, that gorgeous jawline of his that gave his face a chisel to perfection, finish with his clear complexion and those rich milk chocolate eyes that swallowed up women's trusts like a shark swallows fish. Dang, what a description. Man sounds like a dreamboat in a bad suit. <laughs> <laughs> Today, those eyes I fell in love with were clouded with fear. He was attractive and he knew it. If only he knew that being honest would have set him free, made him more attractive and given him even more happiness than he was experiencing now. He did not have a single minute clue. I said, let me pull my car out in the street first. I can get at the passenger side a little better if I do that. I sweetly called to him. He took a breath in, appeared to hold in, and slumped slightly onto the gray stairs before he saw me pull out further down the street than he probably figured I would. Then he propped himself up a little bit until he saw me stop. I put my car in park, my blinkers on, and reached for his bag of stuff I put in the passenger seat, trying to look like I'm looking for his phone. He did not rush any faster, just kept at his sauntering pace. I think at this point, he had an idea of what was going on, but I gave zero Fs if he did. His house of cards was already crumbling into a foundationalist mess. I grabbed his phone out of my pocket, making sure it was on the messages with his friend that got him red-handed in the first place. I placed in the top of the bag and rolled down my driver's side window. Hey, found your phone. I said, continuing to be as sweet as can be. I figured if I kept this same even and loving tone, it would hurt him more knowing that I was killing him with kindness. His pace quickened just slightly. Yeah, where is it? He said, his head perked up just slightly. I wasn't sure if he was nervous or relieved, but I didn't really care either way. The next few actions happened very quickly. It's on top of this bag here, I called to him, still as sugar-coated loving as ever, although I was starting to sicken myself from manipulating this demeanor with this filthy fraud. I pulled the bag out of the driver's side window so as to hang it slightly out of the window. He came up and took the bag. He said nothing but reached for the phone. Before he could even look at what was on the phone, I put my car in drive and turned my wheels towards the street away from him. I smiled cutely again to him, sugar-coated toxic oozing from my next actions. He looked up briefly just before I smiled and said my kind, piercing, departing words and drove away fast enough for him to not be able to catch me as I drove to a bar with my two girlfriends that were waiting for me to drink my weight in wine while they supervised. Don't ever come back. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. My heart was racing. Well written and Sam like... I kind of want to know if there was, if he like reached out to you Yo! or if there was any fallout or like, did you learn more? And the thing is, we might be able to might because be able to. Oh Sam my gosh. is part of the OK family. And uh, I think we can call her right now. All right, let's do it. Let's see if she picks up. If she's in Boston, it's like midnight there. Oh, I forgot about that. Hi there. You have reached. We'll call her one more time. Fingers crossed. Please be up. Please be a night owl. I don't think so. 1230. Yeah, it's 1230 and uh, Tuesday. She's probably responsible. Hi there. You have oh. 770. Dang. 
Oh, well, Sam, we wish we could have talked to you. We are going a little late tonight. Um, but, uh, Hey, maybe we can talk to you later on another episode. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I feel like Sam just ended the relationship in the most like beautiful revenge way yeah. possible mm -hmm. without, with, with being kind yeah. too. like never really was what like did any cheap shots or anything. I mean, maybe, maybe the, the only cheap shot was the sending the message to the guy the with middle like finger thing. the middle finger, Yeah, but, but mild, mild, yeah. mildly. I feel like everything hurt. was pretty deserved. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, Sam. Good for you, Sam. You really like, it was well thought out and, and, and yeah, it like, it was like you stuck it to him, but with kindness, which I think is the best way to do it. But, um, what did you think? I would love to know in the comments what you thought of this story. We loved hearing it. Yeah. Um, Sam, hopefully we can talk to you soon. Yep. And with that, if you love us, make sure to subscribe. And we, we love, love you. you. See, See you tomorrow. tomorrow.